Okay, welcome to this second lecture. And uh, in the first lecture, I introduced you to the notions of inverse problems and improperly posed problems. Just uh, to remind you, in inverse problems, we, uh, we would like to measure a quantity f, uh, but we cannot do that directly. So we measure some derived data g. And uh, this is connected to the image we want to, to the uh, quantity we want to measure by an operator R. Uh, and so an inverse problem can be summed up mathematically simply as given a measurement operator R and some data G, try to find um, um, an image or um, uh, an element in X such that RF equals G. Typically, the quantity we would like to find is an image. And uh, typically, the uh, result that we can actually measure, we call the data. Um, I will start today with uh, giving you some examples, three examples uh, that I will use throughout the lecture for almost everything. And that's going to be much more, uh, much simpler uh, than uh, the introductory, uh, re uh, introductory remarks about inverse problems in partial differential equations. Okay, so uh, our first operator, our first example is the identity operator, which seems to be extremely easy, right? So R is the identity operator, which means that uh, we can actually measure the quantity we would like to see. And um, so this is not, it doesn't look like an inverse problem. Right. Um, if I want to write it down as an inverse problem, uh, then the inverse of the identity operator is again the identity operator. So that seems to be simple enough. However, that's not uh, completely true. And uh, let's at look at the example of image denoising. Um, now that image denoising is simply uh, you take a picture and there's some noise overlaid on it and you want to regain the original image. How can that be, that be formulated in a mathematical way? Well, obviously, uh, if we take the correct picture, um, then um, everything's fine. And uh, as I said, in this case, the measurement operator is just the identity, the photo, if without any error, then uh, the photo that we take is exactly what we want to have, so we do not have to remove it. Um, however, let's look at the real world. And uh, if you uh, can I use that, no, I can't. Well, I don't know why. Um, Okay, let's look at uh, the picture that you see here. It has been taped and obviously there's some noise over it, some speckle noise it's called, and we would like to remove it. Now, um, if we do as we, as we said, I mean, if we just take R to the minus one as the identity matrix and we accept this as the photo that we want to have, then um, I would not be satisfied because we um, also, if you would look at this, you would say, okay, this is not an acceptable photo. So uh, the measurement operator R is the identity, that's no problem, but um, the spaces X and Y are not the same. I mean, X is the space of all acceptable images. I mean, that's where my real scene, my real photo comes from. And why? That's the measurement. So that might be the original image overlaid with some noise. Okay, so uh, the range of photo is more or less everything. Uh, that would be the, uh, uh, this, the space Y. But the space X, for that one, I would take the space of all acceptable images. So just taking the identity would mean that I accept this photo over here as an acceptable image. I would say that, okay, that's, that might be reality. It might be an image that has been taken without any noise. Now, that's 
obviously not true. I mean, you wouldn't agree to that. So what you need is a mapping that goes from, from the range of photos, but delivers us an, a fo an, an image that you would deem acceptable. Okay, so uh, the identity operator obviously is not the right one, and we need to take a different one. We'll see that there are many choices for that. And uh, yeah, you'll see what, uh, what we'll do for that. Okay, uh, so it's quite clear that uh, the, um, the invoice cannot be the identity operator because it maps um, from, um, uh, it, it would mean that it would make, every, it would mean that it maps every element in Y uh, to the same element in Y, but uh, the space X is smaller than Y. So uh, that's not a reasonably defined operator and we need to find something else. Um, now, if we accept that, uh, then we immediately find that uh, using some noise, of course, several images can be mapped exa to exactly the same photo, uh, to exactly the same photo. So it's also not clear that the mapping that I would like to have is, in fact, uh, uniquely solvable. Okay. And... Uh, the last one, and um, this is also quite problematic. Um, it seems to be at least continuous, right? I mean, the identity operator, even if it's only in subspaces, then probably that's going to be continuous. Well, also that's not completely true because we still need to define norms in Y and X. And I already told you, and it's very easy to prove, that you can easily make any operator continuous by changing the norm. But it's also the other way around. You can make any operator discontinuous by using the uh, by using a norm, by changing the norm. And uh, this is also true for the uh, identity operator. Now the norm in Y is uh, quite clear because uh, this is the data that is given to us by an experimentator, by a physicist or whoever. And uh, he can tell us in which norm he can actually uh, limit the measurement error. So that's quite clear. But what should we use as a norm in X? I, remind, I remind you that that's the space of all acceptable images, of all images that, uh, we, that we find in nature. And for and somehow we need to define a sensible norm on that. So um, since a norm also defines a distance function, um, that would mean that this norm would give us uh, the would tell us how far apart two images are that I give you, and that's not so easy to understand, and it's also not e not easy to define. Um, there are ways of doing that. What is the difference between two images? By the way, L2 is a very bad, very, very bad choice. We'll see that. And um, so we'll have to take some very decent norms. And uh, it turns out that in these norms, the, uh, con the operator is, the, in the identity operator is again discontinuous with respect to L2 in, da uh, in uh, data space in photo space and these norms in image space. So this is the first example, the obviously easiest one I can come up with, but even there we will have to do something. 